We are live on the air. God damn. Hi, hello, and how's it going? It is her to she does mean as I, Melenti, a decade. And I'm Alex with an I, and this is Cafe. Gong later. How are you today? I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. No, I'm doing well. What about you? I'm doing well. I'm feeling better than last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Last um, week we talked about mental health. Mm -hmm. You're having a little bit of a hard time. I was, but I think um, playing with makeup and coming to see you helped. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about things that were going on. Yeah, talk about talking things out. And you know what? That... that conversation actually sparked up a uh, uh, an idea for me to talk about and i heard you talk a little bit about how you grew up and it was very much like this food yeah this food no bad um and kind of like diet culture and i and i was wondering what that was like i think a lot of people wonder what it's like as a drag performer to have these expectations of like meeting a certain like looking a certain way mm -hmm. right um so i kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that and ask you what it's like to like do you ever have this feeling of like when you're getting ready of like it's not good enough no but now i do <laughs> no, <just kidding. laughs> i never really thought about that but i guess i can speak from personal experience from what i've seen there is a lot of um I want to look skinny so I can look good mm. or there's a lot of like um, I need to lose weight or um, it's not till recently that there's been um, a lot of like body positivity you know um, and I think uh, same thing as always the further back in time you go the worse it gets mm -hmm. but right now I feel that um, there's a lot of people who are embracing the fact that bodies come in all different shapes and sizes um, but I was born in 91, you were born in 91, <laughs> but that wasn't the case back then. I remember that there was a lot of, um, a lot of shaming, a lot of, oh, I, I need to, um, not eat. It, it's kind of like an uncomfortable subject now that I think about it. So that's why I'm like, mm. oh. <laughs> this is a place to talk about uncomfortable things. Where are we? In our moment. <laughs> and how many minutes away from Hanford is oh, it? Oh, we're not fucking doing this <laughs> You know, I think I always say like being comfortable doesn't doesn't equal growth. Mm -hmm. Being uncomfortable equals growth to me. Um, just because when we talk about different things or we experience new things, then you're growing as a person, right? Change is growth to me, um, even if it is a little uncomfortable. So I hear you and I hope that we can make this conversation, you know, more comfortable to talk about because i think we talked a little bit about relationships and how it was taboo this diet culture thing can also be taboo talking about body dysphoria can also be taboo right um me if you didn't know i'm a transgender man yeah um so i do deal with a lot <laughs> i was assigned female at birth and i transitioned to a man um you're doing a great job Thank you. <laughs> I actually had somebody tell me that. I know, <laughs> that's what I told you. And it's something that I share with, I share with people because I think it's gonna make a difference or it's gonna create a positive impact. Um, but it is something that I'm scared about sharing all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't share it because I'm like, oh, I want the spotlight or I want attention. But as a trans guy, I have dealt or I do deal with dysphoria, body dysphoria pretty pretty often. As a kid, I was already dealing with it too, just because there was that aspect of like, you know, my mom would be like, you're gonna get another plate? You're gonna get more food? Are you sure you're hungry? Or if I didn't finish my plate, why didn't you finish your food? So it was like, if I ate too much, it was too much. And if I ate not enough, it was not enough. Like, you know, so I was really, really, and I was a chubby kid. So I was a really chubby kid and they used to call me elephant. They used to bully me all the time for being for being chubby. And so growing up, I was really, really conscious about the way I looked and my, the way my body looked. And then obviously my body didn't match the way that I felt inside. 
um so that kind of elevated it i made the decision to start on hormones and transition start my my medical transition right because you don't have to be you don't have to medically transition if you're a trans person right but i did because i i didn't want to keep living like that i didn't want to keep being uncomfortable in my body um so then i did and then it alleviated some of it but it doesn't go away so i started getting into fitness um and now i go to the gym all the time and it does help but i do have other goals and you know than just like trying to alleviate my body dysphoria um because society tells us that a man's supposed to look like this right and a woman's supposed to have that hourglass figure and so on so i want to be able to be perceived as a man that i am so i feel i think i pressure myself into setting these goals for myself is there anything that we can do to support someone that we may care about that's going through these struggles i think something that people can do to help the other person that's dealing with dysphoria is to try to maybe ask like what is it like what is like what is it that you're that you're worried about or what is it that's going on or what is what parts of you are you be feeling dysphoric about and then asking them like how can i help you but then also not doing like the positive like the toxic positivity stuff because that stuff gets fucking annoying because i feel like toxic positivity is like it's yeah. right there with being toxically negative because at the end of the day you're invalidating an experience it's, it's invalidating you're yeah. saying no 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 look at the bright side no 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 stop being negative like it's invalidating someone's experience when you yeah and i think yeah so it invalidates people's experiences and just being able to to be there and being like hey like well you know i think you're doing the best you can or for the goal that you have set like you're halfway there like you know um it's okay if you mess up a little bit like it's okay if you're feeling that way like you know sit with it or whatever the case may be i think having that support you know helps me i think you being there and just being able to like tell me like no alex like body is coming different you know shapes and sizes look at all these men look at all these celebrities like because i have this expectation of me like comparing myself to to so and so or so and so and so and so and um you remind me and i'm like okay like you know I, you know they're right I, I need to kind of sit back and 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 accept that all our bodies are built different and i'm just built a certain way and even if I want to be able to achieve something, like my body's just not built that way. Um, I think what helped me was kind of looking maybe at people if I needed inspiration or something at people who have similar bodies to me mm. or understanding that, like, I'll never be able to look like John Cena, right. you know, but <laughs> um, but if I get toned or, or if I try to like, you know, looking up someone that's more like my body mm. shape, like more realistic expectations. Yeah. Um, especially when we're younger and we have no idea or when you're being fed like you if you don't look like this you're ugly you know that, that messes with uh, someone's self-esteem and we talked about social media last time how it affects people's you know view of themselves and their mental health but it does affect their self-esteem too like it yeah like there's so much in the media right now that's like it might my niece she's nine and she's worried about skincare and, and I'm like, why are you? You're nine. Like, she's like, I don't want wrinkles. And I'm like, you're nine. <laughs> like, but yeah. that's very real, though, because um, social media, you're scrolling and this is all you're being fed. And the the more th you like something, the more it appears and the more it feels like that's the standard, you know. Um, but purposefully, that is why or on purpose, that is why I disconnect from social media. I don't think I've ever told you that, but like I fully like go that social media this is real life mm -hmm. and i only follow and and like things that are real and human i don't like anything that's like curated anything that feels influencer anything that feels whatever because i i try to protect myself by seeing real people do real things and not mm -hmm. uh, curate my feed with like all this fakeness yeah and i think even before um uh, i think before when i first met you you were so like your the way of thinking for you for for food was was a little bit different to me because for you it was like it was like a chore having to eat 
I was like, did you eat lunch? And you're like, ugh, like you know. And yeah. And I was like, what'd you eat? And you're just like this. And I was like, was it good? And you're like, well, I ate it. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, are you just eating? Just. <laughs> Yeah, like I guess do whatever you do when they're like break up and give me energy or whatever. Me with like, three Cheetos you know? in my stomach. <laughs> I actually do feel that my relationship with food that started because when I was little, I would see all these things like, like I'm from ninety one. You're from ninety one. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> Everything you would see on TV regarding um, celebrities or on magazines. Oh, this is their secret diet. Slim fast. Slim fast, like Jenny Craig. Herbal life. Herbalife, like all these things. And as a kid, you're like, oh my God, I need to stay snatched, you know? And it's sad too that there's a lot of adults who who are, their ideal body shape is going back to when they were like 20 or in high yeah. school. And it's like, you're an adult now. Like it's natural for our bodies to change. And, um, and then a lot of like um, companies and money makers, um, they prey on those insecurities they yeah. know people feel that way and it's on purpose and they're they sell you that product that skinny pill that shake that this that that and it's crazy i'm on this like fitness journey fitness uh, whole pizza in my mouth <laughs> Fit <laughs> fitness dick no <laughs> cut <laughs> um but yeah just this this journey to like you know get stronger i, I kind of want to not bulk up but i want to just be strong i don't know in my mind i think the reason he's solid y'all he's a little tank <laughs> look at that i think the reason why i have this thing set in my mind of like oh i want to be stronger is because when i was a kid I, I felt so weak i felt like i couldn't i couldn't do anything i couldn't say anything i had to like i couldn't do anything and now i'm just kind of like setting boundaries and being like no and then just physically trying to get stronger too you know and i think well shit i think it's something deeper <laughs> than just working out so i think a lot of people also wonder as a drag performer how you can go from one to another like in regards to the way you look and people because when people see you in drag it's like oh my god it's millennia mm -hmm viral sensation <laughs> millennia decade <clears throat> and then um when i'm like oh yeah this is this is johnny johnny's actually millennia and then johnny's like mm hey -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and i've had people be like why why are they so quiet why are they so timid when you're not dragged and i'm like what do you mean that's how they are and they're like no they're not i've seen them and i'm like that's who you've seen on stage but it's it's was... a really difficult concept to try to explain some to someone especially when you're like introverted like you're fake like how is it that you could do that on stage but you act shy who are you yeah. fooling and yeah. it's like no honestly like i think that that probably happens to a lot of like introverted introverted performers and i'm one of them like and i could see why i if i saw someone doing like have that millennia energy up there performing I'd probably have a different um, expectation of them, you know? That's what performing is. Ha like Tina Turner, actually, I saw an interview that I really, res it really resonated with me, but um, they were saying like, you're so calm. How is it that you get all crazy on stage? And she was like, I'm a performer. Um, I'm a show woman. Like I turn it on for the stage and I'm there to perform and to put on a show. Are you a show woman? I'm a show lady. <laughs> but I remember that before when I started drag in 2013, the landscape was very different and what dominated was the whole a man giving you the illusion of a woman. Mm. And it, it was a lot about the, the transformation aspect of it. And that's what I would try to go for. Um, but now as the times have evolved and, you know, um, things change, the, the common thing now is drag is self-expression. So... It doesn't matter if you transform yourself. It's a matter of you, like you manifesting your art into a walking piece, basically. Yeah, yeah. Self-expression in whatever shape, form you want to see it. So there there was, when you first started, there was like this expectation of like, hey, you have to mm -hmm. pass almost as mm -hmm. a woman, right? Yeah, li like th those were the best, the girls that look like real girls. Oh, those were like 
the good ones and like it was expected of you to wear the high heels it was expected for you to corset to pad to give yourself that hourglass shape to have um like this wouldn't fly for them like they would be like what the hell a little part of me never agreed with it i was like how are, how are you gonna tell someone how they should present their art you know you know what's sad i once remember that so like right now anybody can do drag and it's always been and uh cisgender women have always been part of the drag scene too but i don't know why there was a point when it was very this like the man giving you the illusion and um there was a performer they won the competition and they made it to the finals and i remember that they didn't show up to the finals and then I was curious as to what happened and I found out that they got kicked out because they found out that they were a cisgender woman. And I was like, even then I was like, why would you kick someone out like that? You know, like, like they saw it as cheating or something. And, and I remember being dumbfounded by that. And now it's a big talk now how um, we need to welcome everybody into these spaces and that anybody can do drag. And I think that's one of the things that you that you showed me is like a drag saying instead of drag queen, it's always just a drag performer, right? Or a drag mm -hmm. I feel that's that's the best way to handle it because of course, of old school people are probably going to be like drag queen, drag king, but as we always talk about, like there's so many genders identities out there, and one way to make everybody feel seen and validated is just call it drag art or yeah. a drag artist. You know? Society has this way of like setting those expectations of, of binariness, right? Mm -hmm. Even in the queer community. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of folks deal with, you know, they're exploring their gender identity sometimes through drag, you know, and exploring that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that sometimes it, they want to express it, but it doesn't mean like they're trans, right? Mm -hmm. They just want to be able to express yeah, it. Yeah, that's why you have straight men who do drag. Mm -hmm. You have... Um, there's been people who started doing drag and they realized they were trans. Yep. There there was a performer on Drag Race called Got Mick. He's a trans man, but he does feminine drag. And people would be like, but why, why did you transition then? And yep. they had to explain this whole thing. This is my identity and this is what I choose to do for fun, for my whatever. So that's wild to me. I feel like my dysphoria would never let me be able to do something like that. If it was for me, my body dysphoria would just, you know, because I think one of the things that I'd like to add to is when you have body dysphoria, you do certain things to alleviate it. Right. But that's all it's doing. It's it's an alleviating. It's not a solution. The solution is kind of accepting that your body is the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're medically transitioning um, hormones or surgeries and stuff like that, like I'm so grateful that I had got top surgery. Right shaping my chest the way it's at the way it is but i'm still dysphoric about it you know and i guess i would never know like what it feels like but um i never thought that for me um my body was was never an issue for me if anything when i was younger i wanted to gain more weight because i was very thin um i remember that when i started doing drag i didn't think much of my body i just thought i was whatever but um it's not till recently probably because i'm 32 and now i'm back then i could eat whatever and nothing happened and now i'm over here like gaining weight or i i look at myself in the mirror and i'm like not comfortable being shirtless or i feel like like i need to lose this or this is bigger than that and it sucks uh looking at yourself in the mirror and not accepting your body or not feeling comfortable with how you look yeah no, it does suck. And I think a lot of people get so hung up on like, if I have surgery, it's going to make everything go away. And it doesn't because it's something that's inside. It's not something that's like, you can just, you can't just put a, you know, it's not a fix it. It's not a quick yeah, fix. I saw a clip of a show that I sent to you. I don't know if you saw it, but beautiful girl. And then she's crying. And and then uh, one of a lady tells her you're so beautiful and she's like can you stop telling me that like stop telling me that i'm beautiful for a trans woman i just want to be seen as a woman and um like do you know how hard it is to walk into a room and know that everybody's gonna look at me and um because of my appearance and i don't know it kind of hit 
home and it nail it puts into a perspective you know like maybe you don't have to go through maybe you don't go through that but keep in mind that uh, some other people do there's people that tell me all the time like how you did earlier like oh you did a great job you know or oh my gosh i couldn't tell and i'm like that's kind of fucked up that you're telling me that because it gives you an idea of what trans people are supposed to look like but to me i for myself i take that as a compliment it gives me like euphoria right so because that's i want to that's i am that's i am the man that i am and that's it i'm proud of you for doing it because i remember how there was a point where you, where you were like t talking about your dysphoria and how it was for you and like i wish i didn't have to go through this to now speaking out of a place of power whether you're fully comfortable with it or not you're using it to enlighten other people and showing visibility to other people who may be going through the same road that you went through who may be several steps behind one of the things i think that people get so caught up in is like oh you have to be proud of who you are you have to be proud of rainbows yeah, pride all the time and it's like sometimes i'm not you know i don't like that i had to go through surgeries i don't like that i had to fight insurance companies i don't like that i had to argue with doctors or go or do all this extensive therapy you know on top of my regular therapy i don't like waking up and feeling uncomfortable in my skin like i don't like looking at the scars that i have like i don't like any of that and people get so caught up on like oh well you chose to do that and it's like no i didn't choose to do that i chose to live and i have to do this in order for me to live you know so i'm just um, doing this to exist and it's it's a lot of back and forth and it's like oh sometimes i have like this these great days where i'm like i look great and then there's times where i'm like i fucking hate myself you know but i'm i'm sure does that happen to everybody or just me well <laughs> no i think it's a lot more common um because another aspect to it that i forgot i grew up with so on top of the trying to hide because i was a queer person and this and that in high school i started getting acne and like it's something that is not fully talked about but it is at the same time and that's another thing like you know it's there's people who don't like their appearance don't feel comfortable in their own skin because of it mm -hmm and people go out of their way to come to these people and give them advice or tell them to do this wash your face take a shower and it's like it it's hard i'll speak from personal experience it was very difficult and i felt uncomfortable in my own skin and even after um it kind of went away um you still i was left with scars and the scars always remind me of that or make me feel a certain type of way so um, I guess I, I bring that up because of what you're saying, like, do people look at themselves in the mirror and think this? And I think a lot of people do because it comes in so many different ways from like the scarring, from acne, from body dysphoria because because of how you identify or because you're gaining weight and you're not used to it like I am. It comes in many forms. Yeah. And I think, um, thank you for sharing that. You know, you're... <laughs> Your, let's go back <laughs> your um the way we deal with trauma humor just back to the up. beginning <laughs> um sharing that part of yourself i think it was definitely something you talk about that it was hard growing up and mm -hmm. society like you said just take a shower just wash your face mm -hmm. it's gonna i'd had up. people tell me that and it was it's more than that it's like it's like a hormonal imbalance. yeah and it, it was hard like i had total strangers walk up to me and give me unsolicited advice do this try this um uh you should do something because you're handsome but the acne like people would just say things like that and that messes with you yeah it does. Mm -hmm. why are you looking at me like that i'm not gonna cry your eyes <laughs> but yeah that i think that's gonna conclude today's episode on dysphoria since millennia started crying yeah <laughs> these lines are actually <laughs> tears <laughs> tears no we talked a little bit about body dysphoria we talked about society you know expectations in regards to like being binary mm -hmm. we talked about 
dysphoria and how it can come in many different yeah. ways one thing that helped me was um there was a lot of people too that like i saw with acne or with scarring or with extra weight or that were bigger than me and never in my mind did it go through that i think any less of them so i guess what i started doing was like hey there's loved ones who have this and i don't think any less of them and i don't i i would feel terrible if i knew that they felt dysphoric or they felt like shit in their own skin you know and so i started treating myself with that same love and compassion and and the moment the voice in my head starts saying oh people are gonna think this and that and the third i try to cancel it out and be like what would i tell a person a loved yeah. one who was had what i have yeah i think the best way to help somebody you know that might be dealing with that is just 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 listen i think a lot of the time we're so focused on jumping to try to fix things for them that or giving an answer rather yeah, than listening like, i just need you to be right here like you know thank you for asking if there's anything you can do i don't think there is right now but you just sitting here with me is like that's, that's gonna help i think we always end up with the same things of like take care of your mental health surround yourself with people that are good for you and and just you know be just, nicer to yourself i think it's the core of living a peaceful life you need to have good people around you you need to be kind to yourself and that's it that's it that's all you got to do and then you'll be fine then why don't we do it <laughs> we're working on it <laughs> uh, but yeah so that's it thank you so much um if you'd like to share you know some of your stories and your comments or send us a dm don't forget to follow us on instagram um alex of the 991 millennia decade definitely follow us on there we're gonna have uh maybe a couple more episodes before we wrap up this season <gasps> where are you going yeah <laughs> and then uh we're, we have some really cool things coming up yeah so. we're planning fun things fun fun ideas coming fun up ideas but, yeah. but um thank you so much for joining us we appreciate every listen every click every follow we hope that you continue to share Please leave a comment below if you have anything to add to the conversation and we'll catch you on the next video. Yeah, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Let's go back. Get that fucking song, dude. Back to the beginning.